Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In this video, I'm starting a three part series where I talk about my sewing machines. And today I'm going to be sharing about my workhorse. This is my Janome Horizon Memory Craft 9400. It's big, it won't fit in frame, it's a little heavy, but I use it for everything. I'm going to tell you the things I like about it, the things I don't like about it, and even tell you how much I paid for it. Let's dive in. So as I was saying, this is a really big machine, and that's part of the reason why I bought it. Here to the right of our needle is 11 inches, and I believe this is the biggest um, kind of bed to the sewing machine that you can find. And I really liked this feature because if I'm quilting something, you know, I'll have the quilt all rolled up and this larger bed area makes it easier to quilt. Going along with that, when you're quilting, you can take off this drawer. And this is a really pretty great drawer. It has a lot of storage front and back. And then you can slide in this table. So this is just a really nice big table and it makes it a lot easier to do my quilting. Speaking of quilting, it comes with walking feet. You can also do free motion, which I haven't tried, um, but I've really liked this feature and this was one of the reasons that I bought it. So while we're, while we're talking about size, this is the foot pedal. I should turn it this way. And it's a really large foot puddle, which, which is really nice. And this is for cutting, um, which I actually have not used at all. Um, but you could press this down and it would cut the thread. There's also this button right here that you can touch when you are ready to cut your thread. So I just use this button. I really love it. I didn't think I would need it, but I use it all the time. Now let's see this in action. All right. So here's the machine. This is how I normally have it set up. This is just the regular presser foot. I'll go ahead and turn it on. It's not quite. There it is. And then it always asks resume last pattern. So that's kind of handy if you were sewing a certain stitch and you had everything set up the way you liked. Um, this time I'm going to hit the X and we will just go back to our regular straight stitch. So over here is the computer and you go through all the stitches over here and you can use your finger to tap through and change the settings or there's a little stylus that comes with it. And I find this is really handy or just anything that's plastic is kind of easier to touch the screen with than my fingers. So up here on the top, now that we have it open, we have our thread and the bobbin winder. So let's go ahead and thread this. It's really pretty easy to do. Um, I bought this machine from a local dealer and they showed me all these basics. This machine does have an automatic threader and I actually found, mine's very dusty, but I found that it doesn't work that well for me. It worked at first, but then it hasn't been consistent since then. So I thread it by hand. So that's probably um, a good thing to know. A drawback of this machine is that the threader maybe doesn't work as well as it should. So I just like to get a clean cut and then thread it. So that's not a super big deal for me. It would be really nice if it worked. Um, I do need to take this in and get a tune-up, so maybe they can fix it at that time. I'm also gonna put in a different bobbin, which is really easy. It's very um, easy to access the bobbin case. And the machine also does let you know, usually, when the bobbin is getting low. <laughs> I have found a few times that I am just sewing along and it hasn't given me a warning. Um, which is kind of annoying, but most of the time I get a little warning. It pauses and um, a little warning comes up over here saying, oh, alert, the bobbin's getting low. And then I do really like that in this drawer, you have a special little slot or five slots for your bobbins. So that's really handy. You can just keep the colors that you often use right there and then keep all the feet that you use um, right on top as well. 
Okay, and then let's go ahead and just stitch a straight stitch. Here's a sample of a skirt that I'm working on. And I also usually will have a piece of washi tape on here to um, indicate my seam allowance. I find it's easier um, to keep my seam allowance if I have something that's big that I can look at. There are little lines on here, but they're just a little too small for me. Okay, so buttons that I use all the time. So this is the button that will lift and lower the presser foot. There's also a lever at the back, which you can't see, but this lever doesn't work until I push this button down once. So I put it down, and then if I need to adjust, I can lift this up from the back and move my fabric. So let's just get that in place. And then I'm going to start stitching. Okay, and then I will back stitch. So one thing that I do not like about this machine is that the back stitch does not work very well on lighter weight fabric. Like it worked totally fine here because this is a heavy kind of denim fabric. But if I'm stitching like anything lighter than this, it will kind of bunch up with the back stitch. So that's a bummer, but it is something that I knew before I bought it because I tested the machine out at the dealer and I saw that that happened, but it was not a deal breaker for me. So another nice feature is this little speed control right here. I had it on medium because I was quilting recently, but I can put it all the way up to maximum speed and then go quite a bit faster. But it's really nice um, if you're quilting or something and you don't wanna go too fast or working with little kids, you can put it down and just make yourself go really slow. So that's the lowest speed, it's pretty slow. Um, and then it can get up pretty fast. <laughs> so let's just get down here. I did not cut my fabric evenly at the end, so I'm going to stop right there and again do my back stitch. And then I really like this automatic cutter. Um, there's also a pedal for it, but I haven't been using that. So just a quick little button. I really did not think that I would enjoy this button or this button at all, but I've gotten really used to them and really like them. So here's where it cut the thread and it's really a pretty clean cut. Um, and here, these stitches are a little easier to see. This is the bobbin side. So really nice, even, um, no complaints. So I'm gonna show you the screen and show you some of the features on here. I'm sorry that it's flickering on camera. I'm not sure how to stop that. Um, but here we have all our stitches. And when you press the, air, the arrows down here, it'll go through. And you can see all these different stitches. Um, one thing that I like is the buttonhole on this machine. I think it stitches a really great buttonhole. It has an automatic style button um, buttonhole stitch, which I prefer. That means that it'll stitch the whole buttonhole in one go. And this is that foot. So you put your button in the back here and it automatically determines how um, long to make your button. So this is my preferred kind of buttonhole foot. And um, so I've been really happy with this. So let's go back to our straight stitch. Um, this, these are your adjustments. So this is your needle position and this is the length. So if you're going to baste, you can just lengthen that up, or if you're top stitching and want to move the needle position, you can do that. And then if you want to reset to your original, you can hit the arrow and then hit this down here. So I really like this feature that it's super easy just to get back to the, um, the factory settings for any stitch. It's also really easy to adjust the tension. 
Um, and I don't have to do this very often, but I like that it's right here and just very easy to do. The other thing I like is that for each stitch, it tells you what foot you should be using. So if we go like to one of these, you know, here these are some of the overcast stitches and it shows you the foot and the letter that'll be on it. So that's just really convenient. Now, if you go up here, if you click the t-shirt, this will give you some scenarios of things that you would do for sewing garments. So you can go in and say, oh, I wanna sew a rolled hem and it'll bring up the stitch for you and tell you what foot you should use. So it's just kind of convenient. You can also find them in there. Otherwise, you can choose this for gathering and it has the settings all done for you. The machine also does lettering. I haven't really played around with that. Um, but that could be fun for monograms, for personalization. Now, one of my favorite features is that it has a setting for twin needle and you just click up here and it automatically changes the tension. And I have been super, super happy with this. I find that every sewing machine handles twin needle stitching differently. And um, I've had to make kind of a lot of allowances and adjustments to get twin needle stitching right, except for this machine. This is probably one of my favorite features of it, um, just that the twin needle stitching is very, very good, very easy, um, no complaints. <laughs> and again, when you have this selected, it'll show you the stitches that are okay to do when you're using the twin needle. And then you can just click that to turn it off. And then it'll give you a little warning, make sure that you're using the right kind of needle. Well, I hope that little glimpse into some of the features of the machine was helpful to you. I bought this machine as a really big upgrade. For many, many years, I used the basic level Brother machine, a CS6000i, and it worked great for me, but I got to a point where I felt like I sew enough, I am committed to this, I really deserve kind of that luxury machine. So this machine is, I think, really the highest end that you're gonna find with Janome. Um, there are like embroidery machines, which might be, or probably are more expensive, but this one was pretty pricey, just to be totally honest. I paid $2,900 for this machine in 2019, and it was the floor model and there was a sale on, so it was a discount. Um, but definitely it's like not a price that I took lightly in any way. It was a lot for me, but I felt like I am really devoted to this craft and that I would be using the machine a lot and that it was worth it for me and I could afford it. Um, there are a lot of other Janomis that are a lot more affordable, so you definitely don't have to spend that much if you want this brand. But again, I have a video with tips that'll help you determine what's right for you. Um, this price point was okay for me and I'm happy with it but I totally understand that it is a pretty high level machine. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'm going to be talking about my two other sewing machines that I regularly use in upcoming videos. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can hit the like button or you can buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. There are links for that down in the show notes. Happy sewing. Mm -hmm.